Hey there, in this video I'm going to walk through the process of using the like accessibility scanner thing uh, that comes with your developer tools and using that to detect accessibility issues and, and fix them, hopefully. <laughs> uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, so I'm just on here um, on, con on kind of an arbitrary web page. It's not that arbitrary because this is the web page that this video will be in, but you know, it's, it's a web page on the internet. Um, so I'm in Chrome here, and I can open up my developer tools just like um, I can, you know, anywhere else. And this gives me a bunch of different things that uh, come in handy. I've got the Elements tab that shows me kind of the underlying HTML structure of the page, and that's handy for like understanding, you know, the content of the page. I've got the console here, which is handy for seeing like JavaScript errors and whatnot. Um, and I've got the sources tab, which is handy for things like debugging and like understanding the um, uh, where stuff is coming from. And then I've got the network tab, which uh, is good for like understanding requests. So if I refresh here, you can see that this one web page is actually a bunch of uh, a bunch of things that are loaded between like images and you know all that all that stuff. Um, this is actually a lot more than I thought it would be, but eh, whatever. I'll cross the bridge when we get there. Um, anyway, so the developer tools are, you know, really, really useful set of tools that um, that you can use to understand a web page. And in this video, I'm going to explain another, you know, option or tab that that you get, and that is the Lighthouse tab. So in Chrome, if I go to this little expander button thing, um, I can go down to Lighthouse, and I'm going to click that. And Lighthouse is a tool that kind of scans the web page and detects problems with it and those problems can be a bunch of different things so you can you know look for performance or seo issues or just general best practices you know all that good stuff and i invite you to to play with those and see what happens but i am going to focus on the accessibility issues so if you're here to learn about accessibility i recommend unchecking all of the other boxes and just focusing on accessibility for now um, so without further ado, I think I'm just going to click generate report and watch what happens. And so what this is doing is it's um, loading the page in in different views. So it looks like it's loading it on kind of a smaller phone and and looking for issues. I can already see that there's an issue with uh, like the the links kind of being too big for the the page, and that's you know maybe something I would like to fix. Um, Okay, so now it's done, and I get this kind of score, which is like at a glance a way to see, you know, how much more work you have to do to improve your site's accessibility. And then as you scroll down, you have examples of of things that you might want to fix. So uh, let's see. So background and foreground colors do not have sufficient contrast ratio. Um, funny enough, I think that this is intentional on my part, but let me just click this, and it will... Um, give you more information about like exactly which thing is uh, it has the problem. So if I click this, it'll take me to the elements view and then I can kind of see, okay, it's in the contrast section and yeah, so if I go down there to the contrast section that's here and yeah, uh, the, the thing it's complaining about is uh, that these divs don't have enough contrast and that is true. But in this case, that was intentional because I wanted these to be examples of, of bad contrast. So, eh, you know, good good job, Lighthouse, for detecting this problem. But in my case, this was kind of you know this was kind of intentional. Um, so I'm not going to fix that one. Uh, the other one that it complains about is iframe or iframe elements do not have a title. Interesting. Okay, so let me click that. And oh, I see. So these are actually. Um, these iframes are actually embedded videos, I think. So if I click this, can I go up here to, um, let me find this section. So it's under like, I can see that's an empathy challenge. So if I go here on the page, then yeah, it's complaining about this iframe, which funny enough is coming from YouTube. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of funny. Uh, well, funny is the wrong word. It's kind of interesting, but, um, yeah, this is this is actually coming from YouTube's embed feature. So I might look into this and I might fix it and I might look into, you know, the code that I'm using to embed this video, but 
you know, um, I don't know if I'm going to do that in this video here because it, it might be require me to like dig into the YouTube embedding code, which is going to be a little bit, I think, out of scope for this. Um, but anyway, this is, you know, the, the general flow is here. You go to Lighthouse and you click the generate report button and then you look through the 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 reports or the the examples of of like violations that it's pointing out. Um, okay, I think I'm going to maybe switch over to doing this in maybe a smaller web page because this is kind of an an existing web page and it's kind of complicated. And honestly, I already went through and fixed all of the accessibility issues I could, so we're kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel here. So let me maybe skip over to this example, kind of like. Uh, starter code that I'm using for the class and uh, let's kind of see what happens if I do the the same thing over here um, so yeah let's just let's just jump into it so let's see this is just a, the hello world HTML page from week one so let me go to my uh, developer tools and um, I was already on lighthouse so let me just kind of go to that from the jump so from from here I click this whatever this button is called the expanding button thing and go to Lighthouse, and I can uncheck everything except for accessibility, and then I'm going to click Generate Report. And it's doing its thing. It's like loading the page in, in different devices, or maybe just in one small device, and it's, it's generating the, the accessibility report. Okay, so it looks like I've got um, at least one issue. So HTML element does not have a lang attribute. Okay, let's click on that. And it says, you know, here's an explanation of it. If a page does not specify a lang attribute, a screen reader assumes that the page is in, you know, a specific language, um, which might not be true. So you need to specify the language of your page um, to 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 provide a clue to screen readers about like what language they should be uh, talking in. So I could click this learn more button to, you know, learn more and maybe get an example of exactly what it wants me to do. Um, and if I scroll down, yeah, how to add an HTML lang attribute. Okay, so it looks like it's on the HTML tag itself. And then I say lang equals and then a, a language code. Um, in this case, it is indeed English, but if it wasn't, I could look up different language codes. So yeah, let me maybe, let's try to fix that, I guess. Um, is that the only thing it's complaining about? I think it is. So that's what it gets um, from the automatic detections. It also tells you like, here's some other things you might want to manually test. And you know, these are good clues that you should, you know, maybe maybe remind yourself of like, here's the kinds of things that you could, you should be testing for manually, either with your screen reader or, uh, you know, just with your keyboard. Um, but I'm going to focus on on the thing that it detected automatically. So uh, a few ways I could edit this. I think I'm just going to do it directly in GitHub just for the sake of time. Um, but you know, you should use whatever editing process that you have been following in the rest of the class. So if that's you know using Atom or or Replit or or whatever, um, it's all good. But I'm going to edit it directly. I think, and. Uh, I'm going to remind myself of what it wanted. I wanted HTML lang equals and then a language code. So I'm going to type in here HTML. Maybe I can zoom in. Good enough, I guess. Lang equals and then in quotation marks en. Okay. And if I had other issues in in the accessibility scanner, maybe I would I would also fix that while I'm over here. But I think that's the only issue I see right now. So let me go down here and fixing accessibility. And I want to just commit directly. And yeah, all good. And now we have the lovely uh, wait time while GitHub Pages does its thing. So let me maybe go over here and go over here. And yeah, I haven't deployed this in a long time. I did this sort of at the very beginning of class, but hopefully it doesn't take super long. Maybe while that uh, loads, I'll mention that uh, notice that I did this like at my live URL. Um, unfortunately, and this is like actually pretty annoying, um, the the Lighthouse tool does not work locally. So if I do the same thing, if I like open up that same file locally, and so now I have this like file URL where it's like file colon blah blah blah, and it's like on my local machine, then 
if I try to open up my developer tools and go to Lighthouse, you'll get this error message, which is you can only audit pages that are you know not file, not local file URLs. They have to be deployed. So you have to test it on your live site, which you know, like I said, that's that's kind of annoying because it means that you have to test things live, which is unfortunate, but um, it's just the reality of, of, of what you have to do. So um, make sure you're testing it on your live URL um, if you're using the Lighthouse tool. All right, so now we're deployed again. So let me refresh this and uh, let me close some of this stuff out. Refresh. Let's um, let's go to Elements just to double check that it actually um, loaded. It uh, might not have. Uh, let me try just one more refresh, and maybe it actually doesn't even show up there. Maybe let's go to Source. Um, nope, it's not there. So that's fun. Um, that is what I changed, right? Week one HTML. Yeah, it is. Hmm. What I'm waiting is to, I'm, I'm hoping to see the the HTML lang equals en here. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I just need to wait maybe just one more minute. All right, so there it is. So there's the change I've made. So let me refresh over here one more time. And now, okay, now I see it in my elements tab. Okay. Um, and, you know, you might want to do the same thing if you are making accessibility fixes that you can't actually see in your page. So, for example, like if you're adding, I don't know, like an ARIA label or like an image... Uh, alt attribute then you won't actually see them in your web page you'll have to like dig into the source a little bit so i recommend doing that as well like checking out either the source of the page like using control u on my uh keyboard or the, the elements tab the old trusty developer tools um, and just making sure that your your change is actually there before you scan it again with with lighthouse so anyway, now that I see my change in the source, I'm going to go to Lighthouse again, and I'm going to generate another report. And it's doing its thing, it's generating the report, it's trying it out in different um, uh, devices and whatnot, but here we go. And now I see that this page is, uh, you know, at least according to Chrome's automatic detection or algorithm it's it's as accessible as chrome can can test for that is not to say that it is perfectly accessible but it passes the automatic checks that that chrome is able to do um so like i said before you might want to test out the additional items to manually check here this is you know stuff that chrome can't test for that you kind of need to tech, uh, test for yourself so um, like, I don't know. I don't know what a good example of this is, but, um, since this, this page is so, you know, I don't want to call it simple, but it doesn't have a lot of content. It's going to be a little hard to show you an example of something that Chrome can't test for, but let's see, maybe I'll go back up a level and let's go to if statements. And so this, um, just as a reminder, this, this, this example project is a little quiz where you can enter in um, answers to different questions. So if I say, what's my favorite animal? I can say cat here and I can say done and then click OK. And it takes me to a new um, question with a new input, right? So um, that's just how it works. And let me refresh here and go back to the beginning and let me generate a report for this just to show you maybe an example of of where this like automatic tool might might not catch everything so here we go so this has a pretty low score um, so it's got you know some of the same issues that my previous page did where HTML element does not have a lang attribute and I could fix that exactly the same way that I did it on the other page and I could but I'm not going to because that would be boring but here's here's a new one form elements do not have associated labels so I can click into this and labels ensure that form controls are announced blah 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 and I can learn more and you know, uh, maybe I won't read too much of this but it's saying that labels let screen readers announce uh, input elements properly and it's saying that the input elements which is this thing it doesn't have a label 
and I could go and say, here's an example of how this, you know, here's code that would fail, which is very similar to the code we have actually in our, in our page. And here's how to fix that. You wrap the whole thing in a label tag and you include a text label in there as well. And I could fix that using exactly the same process as I used before where I would edit the HTML and deploy that and then test it again. But the thing I want to point out is that this, uh, this automatic scanner has really only detected one, one of the issues because this actually, this, this content actually contains a bunch of inputs. They're just not visible right now. So if I type cat here and I click done, then this is a new input and this is now a number input and notice that this input with the idea of answer one input that's the only thing that's showing up in in the automatic detection uh, of, of the accessibility issues here and so if I fixed this one issue I would get a higher score here with accessibility and in fact I could probably get to a hundred pretty quickly but my site would still not be accessible because the the input elements that are hidden by default, which this automatic scanner is not able to detect because they're not visible by default, um, you know, th they will remain inaccessible. They'll still have the, the underlying problem. Um, so to maybe just explain why the accessibility scanner can't detect those automatically is this requires user input. And it requires like very specific user input. If I just type nonsense in here, you know, that that doesn't actually get to the next sort of screen in this in this web page. So this automatic scanner is not smart enough to navigate through a bunch of different things that you have to click and interact with and all that stuff. So if your page has that, then you will likely need to rely on on manual testing. And in fact, no matter what, you'll need to rely on manual testing. So. Um, don't be afraid to, you know, try your site out with a screen reader or with your keyboard using like tab navigation, that kind of thing. And this, um, this section here, additional items to manually check. This is a good kind of primer for the kinds of things to, to be looking for um, automatically or, or manually rather. Um, okay, I think that's as far as I'm going to go here. Uh, my goal was to show kind of the process where you load a web page and you go to the Lighthouse tab and you click Generate Report and that report contains some examples of accessibility issues that you might fix and then you fix them and test again and you get, you know, hopefully a higher score. But, you know, that's not always, it's actually never good enough just relying on the mat on the automatic uh, scanner is not enough because you still need to manually test for accessibility with um, all of the other issues that we talked about in in this uh, tutorial um, in, in your mind so things like does my site use semantic HTML does everything have alt text you know all of these things focus behavior size and contrast so you know keep those in mind and, and manually test it in addition to to using the automatic scanner tool as a way to like guide your testing. Um, okay, so hopefully that helps uh, set a direction for how to use this tool to uh, help un help you understand the accessibility issues in your web page and, and how to go about uh, improving some of them. And I look forward to uh, seeing what what you uh, what you're able to fix in the next uh, week or so. All right, see you in the next one.